Trapping plays a very important role in modern-day wildlife management. Professional wildlife biologists monitor fur bearer populations to maintain a healthy and sustainable harvest of this important, renewable natural resource. Trapping provides recreation and income for licensed trappers across this country. Who's Your Trapper Outdoors is brought to you by Who's Your Trapper Supply. J3 Outdoors, manufacturer of the Hags Bracket and Body Trap Spring Clip, Leatherwood Creek Trapping Sense, Weeby Knives and Fur Handling Tools, HTS Productions, Who's Your Trapper Deer Sense, and Leatherwood Wildlife Art. Welcome to uh, Episode 4, Season 7 of Who's Your Trapper Outdoors. Uh, thanks for joining us this uh, for this episode. On this episode will be our uh, first day in New Mexico, uh, first day and first um, check day in New Mexico from last season. Uh, what we'll do, uh, we'll have um, three or four shows that we'll do uh, New Mexico trapping, uh, roughly, and then we'll go to uh, Indiana Marsh um, trapping for muskrats, just, just a real quick short trip on that one, trying to fit it in between ice. Um, Ice, in, uh, ice coming in and ice coming out and ice coming back in, that kind of thing. And then we will go to our semi-live uh, trap line footage where uh, we'll actually have footage from this season that will just be a few days old uh, when we show it. So that'll kind of round out this season. That's kind of where we're, the direction we're going, uh, just so you got a um, kind of an idea what, what we're doing. The uh, uh, set making, set making uh, segment will be on this show as well. And that will continue through the season. So, and that if some of those will stand independently of themselves in a way, but they also, um, in a bigger way, kind of build off of each other too. So, um, you know that that's going to be an ongoing segment this season, and we've had a lot of good positive comments on that. I think people are enjoying that. Um, and uh, I, as I always say, this is what we're doing. This is our kind of our perspective. We're not saying that's chiseled in stone or anything like that, uh, but we're showing what we're showing you. Um, uh, does work. We're explaining to you why it does work, and um, um, you know it, it's working for us. So um, I'm not saying that other methods won't work, um, but uh, what we're doing uh, um, is a proven history over time uh, of uh, a good uh, success record. So, anyways, on this we'll have that segment, and then also we'll have um, question and answer, and that'll round out this show. I want to thank our sponsors, uh, Weeby Knives, um, uh, J3 Outdoors, maker of the uh, Hags Bracket Spring Clip, and then they also have their new bait holder that goes above the uh, uh, bracket on the uh, 3 8 inch fiberglass rods, so you can hang a carrot apple or whatever off of that uh, above the trap. So, uh, good handy addition to uh, his product line. So, definitely uh, you'll see us using those. Uh, in the uh, upcoming Marsh episode. So, anyways, appreciate you joining us and hope you enjoy the show. First day in New Mexico, um, obviously it's a beautiful, beautiful state, beautiful area. Um, we're getting ready to meet up with Adrian, our buddy. He's kind of going to be the, show us show us areas and, and um, kind of guide us around a little bit, uh, give us a help, help us out, try, which really when you have that advantage, it, it uh, definitely saves, saves some uh, trial and error time and, and trying to get your bearings as to where where you're at and that kind of thing. We do have a GPS, which is very accurate. Also, um, so he actually already has a few traps set. Um, so we'll, we'll uh, set traps today, um, probably run those some of those with him, and then, uh, uh, you know, wind out the day. The um, 
difference between this year and last year is last year we were we were fighting a lot of snow melt so there was a lot of mud got stuck a number of times last year this year it's bone dry it's it's uh um, fighting uh just be fighting dust and that kind of thing and probably really hard ground uh, in, in most cases so anyways we'll see how it all plays out when we left home uh it was negative two actual temperature so we're kind of getting a uh, serious uh, arctic blast at home and down here it's um really nice it was uh, uh 60 uh, while we were driving down yesterday and and um, today it's you know supposed to reach 60s again so anyways we'll see what happens see how the day plays out and we'll uh, keep you posted all right first day in new mexico been setting traps most of the day i think it's about three o'clock Uh, Adrian, who uh, is kind of helping us out, being a, our guide, <laughs> uh, and he's already got traps out, so um, we're checking some of his. Uh, we're, we're checking Alex, all of yours. Perfect. Yeah, this is the last one. Oh, this is the last one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, as we always say, the last one's as good as the first mm -hmm. one, so um, connected on this gray right here. So, what kind of set did you have? I had a dirt hole and a T-bone on the opposite side. With top dog in the hole, and they had black gold inside the T-bone. So it's kind of a walk through. Exactly. Walk through set. Mm -hmm. the walk through dirt hole T-bone set. <laughs> the combination is deadly. Yeah. <clears throat> Which just goes to show that you don't have to be really rigid with your sets. Just kind of whatever fits the area, whatever kind of makes sense. Just do it. You know, so as long as there's a trap that's well bedded in the ground with a good attractant by it, then from that point on, you can be creative. Mm -hmm. So and you've been all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Adrian, these are these are cedar berries. Cedar berries. Okay. Yes. And then there's juniper berries, and these animals are. are I mean, this is a. That's all we're seeing on the on their scat. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Important part of their diet. Um, At this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting because we've seen piles of coyote droppings. And then the gray fox too, and, the, and they've got these berries in the, and not all the trees have, have berries on them. So mm -hmm. maybe that was even double duty right here, maybe. I don't yeah. know with this gray fox. Yeah. And then when you see, uh, you know, all this, the, the dead fall, you'll see they'll dig for them. You'll okay. See, the whole thing will be torn up. Just looking for those, yeah. Now, do they eat those uh, pinion nuts too? Yes. Okay. But there, there's none of those growing around here. Um, it. We need a real good uh, summer, and there. Let's see. Well, matter of fact, there was. There should be some around here. There's. I can't see a pinion tree right now, but they're everywhere. There's some. There's one way up on the hill there. Okay. Okay. But there, it's. They're. How would you say it? They're. Uh, in pockets of where they uh, fall, where they uh, produce them. Okay, okay. You know. Trapping products by J3 Outdoors, the most versatile and efficient trapping devices on the market. Got the Hags brackets on here. We just set this trap in one of the grooves, and it just sits right under there uh, on the bottom slot, and then the water's just directly over the trap. All right, trap's missing. We'll see if we got anything. Hags bracket with the with the carrot. Can't beat that. Well, I was sitting over there and Adrian was out here kind of scouting around and he he actually uh, found this mule deer skull where some had been just chewing on it last night. And um, we've got fresh droppings right here where Kyle came through here. So we'll just see if he'll come back, if he's still hanging around in the area or whatever. So got this location here. We've got Kyle droppings right in the middle of this kind of um, bare spot. Uh, pretty much got grass all around us. The um, um, state of Mexico has a law I can't set within 25 yards of a road, so uh, 
that certainly is the disadvantage when you're wanting to coyote trap. But anyways, we've got coyote sign here. Like I said, we've got the coyote droppings. We've got this kind of this open spot. This ground right here was like concrete, really, really hard. So it's virtually impossible to get a um, dirt hole set in. So uh, Justin's got a, a flat set basically here with the with the T-bone off of a, um, a cow vertebrae and um, some lure in the in the spinal cord um, hole with uh, some urine. And then Jake um, has got set over here. He's got this dinosaur bone on there. And um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. A good visual there. Uh, you can use the bones here as long as they're weathered out and no, no material attached to the bone. So um, anyways, we'll see what happens. This is uh, uh, clearly got signs, setting on sign. With it being as dry as it is and the wind blowing, so the areas where the, the get kind of that powdery dust, uh, the wind affects that too as far as leaving sign. So, and you can have sign that looks fresh or old and it's hard to tell uh, just because it's so dry. And then of course there's a lot of places that an animal could be walking, most places actually, and that's not going to leave any sign at all. So we're just kind of doing the best we can in terms of picking locations and, and um, um, that kind of thing. So in some cases we're just setting locations that look really good um, and, and, not, and don't necessarily have a whole lot of uh, visible sign there. So we'll have to see kind of how this plays out. Leatherwood Trapping Sense. Success speaks for itself. Hey, we might have doubled up. Seriously? I see some brush on my other set. Awesome. The uh, trees are bouncing back in there a little bit. Oh, cool. Could be birds. Set up, so we don't step on it. I think right over here. It was real close to the water. Yeah, I was pretty close to the water. I couldn't, oh, it's right there. Oh, look, I would have walked right over. Because I, I up here I couldn't get it. I, I you couldn't, couldn't dig nothing. In. It was really hard. So I, so I figured if we catch one down here, it's going to be probably in the water. Yeah. Make it, make it look. Add some character to it. Got a gray. Awesome. Okay, we got a gray fox here. It's our first check day. Kind of our last spot where we found a, a lot of sign in this big water hole here. Trails going everywhere. So we all just kind of gang set. This kind of leads on up into up in the higher country there, up on the mountain there. And um, real caddy-like. So I threw in some flagging here and a dirt hole set with some top dog, black gold and uh, finicky feline and some cat urine we're on a drag and uh sure enough from the road we could see some the trees bouncing a little bit connected on this gray fox uh plenty of smell in the area there's uh some scat droppings here that the uh, fox left behind we'll leave that just right there and, and uh more eye peel and smell than you can imagine here now so it should be an extra special set for the days to come here um one thing too, the guys asked, brought up. I was remaking the set with these gloves, and there's, you know, there's blood and urine and whatever smells getting all over, over everything. Well, these are I have my gloves marked with an R. These are my remake gloves. I only use them for carrying out animals or anywhere that you know things have been contaminated. I use these gloves, and I have separate gloves for fresh sets. So that's just something I do. Uh, recommend it. But yeah, connected here, and then uh, we also have a coyote too, right behind Jake, a little further on down. We'll might add check that, him out. Might add, and, and Jake's behind the camera. He can kind of pan this area right here. But we're right on, we're right on the dam of this water tank. So um, obviously, those animals are going to travel that top edge here too. And that's how, you know, and the coyotes on the dam on the other end, and the gray fox on this end. So we got all this brush here too, but. Uh, yeah we set on sign we found tracks yesterday uh along this and uh scat in a couple different spots and uh, including the road itself um you have to be 25 yards off right to off. be legal here so we're off quite a ways from that but uh you know if you pick your spots do a little bit of checking and scouting beforehand you can really try and pinpoint where these things are actually running so. And one thing too, I want to add, uh, thanks to Adrian, who's behind Jake. <laughs> um, 
uh, I mean, his his concentration because it is so dry. Is our first concentration is going to set all the, the water tanks, all the places where there's these animals can come for water. Um, when when was the last time you guys had rain, Adrian? Yeah, September. Okay, so here September. it is. Here it is, almost January, and and they haven't had rain since September, so it's very dry. Uh, unlike a year ago when we were fighting all the the um, snow melt and all that, so. Obviously, the animals got to come to these places to get any type of drink or exactly. water, so it's pretty pretty dry. So we noticed also they like the dirt tanks more than the man-made fiberglass or yeah, yeah. probably easier to metal get to. tanks. Probably mm -hmm. easier to get to them. Mm -hmm. so. Take care of him and uh, go check out this coyote. I've been a professional trapper for over 40 years, and in that time, I've skinned literally thousands of animals. I've learned that it doesn't matter how cool a knife looks on your hip. What really matters is sharpness and reliability. And that's why I created the Weeby Wicked Sharp line of replacement blade knives. These are knives that will quickly skin your critters without skinning your wallet. Visit WeebyKnives.com to get the new Monarch folding knife with three replacement blades for just $19.95. Weeby Knives, Wicked Sharp. All right, first coyote of the trip on check day one. Um, just had a uh, dirt hole up here by this rock. He's got it um, nice what? little circle here. <laughs> but uh, back leg catch and an MB here. Um, I couldn't, the ground's so hard, I couldn't technically get a dirt hole in. So what I was doing was taking my trowel and kind of making a trench and putting a rock right on top of the trench so it had kind of a cubby spot so I could put some uh, top dog bait in the hole and uh, I was also using uh, I know Charlie showed this before but we we're taking the feet off uh, fox and drying those out in borax and things like that they're great attracted for predators and I was scooping that in my top dog plugging it down in the hole and kind of covering it up it's a bobcat pee and um, licks an elixir and there you go first day I'm pretty proud of it <laughs> We'll, uh, we're going to remake it best we can right back where it's at. He's got it wallered out pretty good, but pretty pleased. Might add that uh, this, this is kind of our setup. It's, Justin's run a little bit shorter uh, trap chain. This is one that I set up. It's got got uh, got the um, what is that? Thirty? Or yeah, it's like comes out at thirty-one inches basically with the uh, machine chain and then the JC Connor. Uh, shock spring in there and then some additional chain and the JC Connors attached in there with the MB crunch proof swivels so we actually uh, this ends up with seven swivel points so it um, takes a lot of stress off the animals um, uh, fight against the trap and um, um, keeps them in, in better shape and uh, uh, decreases chances and uh, so it's just kind of a, what we feel is a pretty good setup all the, all the way around so anyways uh, that's kind of where we're at on that but uh, and a lot of times um, it's it's kind of thought that when you catch them by a back leg, you know, we'll take them however you catch them. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Um, but a lot of times they see that that's possibly him going to pee on the set or uh, marking his territory or something like that. Um, whether or not that's true in every instance, it's probably not. But in some cases, uh, uh, a lot of times it's it's a uh, you know just kind of marking the area. Yeah, I mean, he could very well be remarking that urine that we put down or turning around to work the set from a different angle who knows but we'll take him however we can get him so we're set up here where these coyote and this gray fox was this big water tank right here and then i'm standing on the dam and then the gray fox was caught down there Right where the dam ends and it's up against the mountain. And then Justin with the on the other end of the dam remaking the set. The back leg for messing with that big old rock too. Yeah. Trying to move it or something. <laughs> and then you can see right behind Justin here where he's remaking the set. Got this cattle trail coming through here but it's also a coyote trail for whatever else wants to run on it so so that that's leading up right up to this top of this dam right here so 
Okay, here's the deal on the when we got that much chain and that JC Connor spring or whatever, we just we just dig an area out for it, just for cover it up. We don't put it below the trap. We actually put it behind it, kind of wherever the, whatever the ground allows us to do. Just to move that rock back again. And then you can see that's kind of a little bit of a dig out right there. You know where he's going to stick his bait, and then that rock's going to go on top of that. You could take that bait and put it down there and actually completely cover it up. They'll smell it. I mean, it's not. It's it's not. Um, that's probably what I'll do, to some extent. It's not something that um, the dirt uh, doesn't doesn't keep them from smelling. Though they can definitely smell it. So. All right, we were watching Adrian last night skin his gray fox. So it's a pretty good trick. He he just hooks to the loop on the tie down loop on the side of his pickup truck. And had a chain with a yeah. I think you had a split ring on yours, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So um, there's no trees right here that we can hang up off of. None of them would ever support this weight because so, it's just a cedar bush is like. So, um, anyways, gives you something to skin against. We don't have one of the things that come out of go out of your reese hitch um, receiver. So, which we wouldn't be able to fit in there anyway. Right. You don't have space for them. It's kind of a problem. So. Um, Anyways, with with three of us working out of a truck, and you got to remember, we also had a freezer in here too, so um, our, our space is very limited. So this is kind of a good trick for that kind of situation. Your truck's pretty full, but you you just got the the, the top the thing on canopy. So, yeah, yeah. So so anyways, yeah. just kind of improvise and do what you what you can, and you, all, you it doesn't matter who you're around, you learn something. There's always exactly. tricks, you know. Mm -hmm. So all right, check day one, and. Uh, uh, Setting traps for the day too. Ended up with the um, coyote and the uh, gray fox. Justin caught by the water tank up on the dam. Pretty cool. And then continued to set traps for the rest of the day. Adrian led us around to some more water tanks. It's kind of to give you an idea how dry it is. There was one tank what two days ago it had water in it, yes. and today it's already dry. So mm -hmm. um, it, it big is, difference from last year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> last, yeah. Last year we were buried in mud three times. Uh, this year it's. Just very dusty. Dust. Yeah. Yep. I'm glad I made it on the dry year. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyways, yeah, we've got we got an even 24 additional sets in, so pretty decent. And we 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 got one. We'll we'll definitely show it um, uh, on an upcoming show. But uh, one uh, one water tank we ended up putting in 13 sets around it. So I mean, it <laughs> it looked it, like it, a home run. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we probably could have put in more. If yeah. We really. I mean, I mean it, was, it was. With the drainage coming in and the back end, back side of the dam, and anyways, it was it's an exciting location, so we'll, we'll anxious to check and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So, one one little tip, uh, I mean, it got up to like 65 to get degrees today, and the sun's out. Got a shell on the truck. On your on your skins, uh, we skinned right away uh, when we caught the stuff. Um, we did not put it in a plastic bag uh, until now. So at the end of the day. We want to bag this stuff up. It, had this been in a bag, it's sitting in that heat. It's kind of like a greenhouse pe effect. Yeah, petri dish in there, and everything's growing. So, and it, it increases your chances of spoilage significantly. So, uh, the sun's going down now, and we're going to bag them, and then we'll throw them in the freezer um, back at the hotel. You know, I was thinking about our freezer the other day. That thing's made it across this country almost. Yep. Mexico, New Mexico twice, Mississippi, Arkansas, a number of times. Um, More than the truck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's been through three three trucks, but uh, it's the same freezer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Who's your trapper, dear sense? Success speaks for itself. All right. We've got. I put a. I put a second set right here um, it's another dirt hole set just like what we've been making traps hugging the hole and then here's our original set right here what we can do if we're just can and this is working off of the set we made two weeks ago uh, on the last episode so we were having problems with a digger coyote or we we're having problems with uh, uh, a digger uh, fox or or even a raccoon so at this point, we say we still haven't had any success, and we want to keep after that particular coyote. We just got some personal vendetta against that coyote. Rarely, 
um, you know, most of us don't have to catch the last coyote that's on the planet, you know, so in order in that area. So, you know, a lot of times it's just much easier, much more productive, much more efficient to just move to fresh ground and just figure to leave that for sea. But if for some reason you got it in, you know, that you, you've got some sort of, um, you want the challenge and you want to continue to mess with that coyote. What you can do, another option that you can throw at them is, here's our original set. And what I did is I actually pulled the trap out of that set. It's not there anymore. And I went back and then I remade the set just like it was. Same bait, same lure, same everything. I put another dirt hole over here and the trap is actually in front of that set right there. And all I did is I put a little bit of bait in the hole. I didn't use any lure and I used some urine. That's it. So that's, that's a completely fresh made set. Um, it, it doesn't have the lure attraction to it. If it did have a lure on it, uh, you could put, if you did want to use a lure, just go to something completely different than what you used right here. Even if it's in the dead of the winter, sometimes if you go to a very, very mild lure, uh, something like our early season uh, or maybe our coyote carnage um, and, and put that over there. Then, you know, a lot of times that, that same animal, you've kind of thrown him for a loop. So he comes over here, messes around, obviously doesn't get caught because the trap's not there sees this set, or maybe he checks this one out first, and a lot of times you can pick them up in this set over here, um, where you just so, you're just kind of throwing them off loop, you know, out of the loop, throwing them, you know, out, off off uh, off their guard uh, with other with this other set. Now, when we normally when we set a location, we'll have uh, if it's an ad, what we feel is a really good location, we'll have two or three four sets made in that particular particular spot. So if that's the case, then you'll have to kind of have to judge for yourself, you know, is it only one set that's being messed with or is it all of them being messed with? Uh, and that's kind of going to be an, on another segment. But, you know, if they're all being messed with, then we're going to have to, you know, back up uh, and, and, you know, kind of address that scenario, you know, when that happens. But uh, uh, that's for future segments. But um, there's nothing wrong with having what I would call a dummy set. Uh, with no trap at all um, that's been there or hasn't been there uh, and then throwing another set in uh, and then in you know completely change up on on the lure uh, if you're using lure at all uh, but with some urine um, only or or urine and bait uh, but some sort of uh, drastic change up so um, and and the other option would be a flat sets uh, but we're, we're gonna get into that uh, later on in the, in the season seven so uh, this is just another option uh, like I said, it seems a little bit odd, a little bit drastic to pull this trap out of here. But that's after, you don't want to pull that trap out of there unless you've just continually had problems with this particular set. Um, you know, with no catch, it's going on for a couple weeks, it's still messing with it, whatever. Um, then, then, you know, try pulling the trap and then put, and not that same trap, put a clean trap in over here. Um, so uh, just something to consider, something to try, something when you start, you know, kind of pulling your hair out on what else to do. Um, Go to go to some scenario like that so um, like i said we got both fundamentally made traps hugging the hole the whole thing um just same thing just just throwing another option at them so uh we'll uh we'll build off of this well, we're actually we're not going to build off of this but we'll have another segment uh on uh, set making uh in the next episode all right you know we get a lot of testimonials about our deer scent um but we had one come in uh late winter late last winter or early spring. And this one kind of was, was over and above, uh, you know, most that we receive. Don from Illinois sent us uh, a letter. And the thing that set this one apart was he sent an SD card. And he had the, the camera set up from October through January. And uh, it wasn't an area that he was gonna hunt. He had lip liquor deer lure out there the entire time. The only time he went in and out was to, to put more lip liquor in and uh, to pull the card from the uh, camera. So the, the deer response over that entire time was incredible. And there's over 300 photos of deer and other animals too. There's a few coyotes in there as well. Checking that scrape out that he had below, uh, below the lip liquor dripper. Now, um, you know, we always say lip liquor works all the time. And, and this basically is like he says, it proves that it, the deer are attracted to it all the time. There's no window that, of time that they're not attracted to it take any other deer scent they're almost always very specific for a time of year doe and heat dominant buck that kind of thing but uh, with this they're always responsive to it both bucks and does like it big as you'll see big bucks little bucks 
small does, big does, whatever. They'll all check it out when they're coming by. So anyways, check this out. It's pretty awesome. Lip Licker Deer Lure. Success speaks for itself. All right, question and answer. I've got two that I'm going to address this week. One of them, um, individual ask, a trapper ask, if there was anything cheaper than uh, peat, mouse, peat moss or coveralls uh, for a freeze-proof cover of traps. The only thing cheaper than that would be just go out in the summertime and get dry dirt and collect it up. Obviously, that's free. Obviously, you have to get a source for that. Uh, and you got to make sure that it's bone dry. The downside with dry dirt on a set is during the day when the sun comes out, it will absorb moisture from the bed, you know, from the ground itself, and then and pull up into that um, dry dirt. And of course, obviously, it's going to turn from dry dirt to wet dirt, which will ultimately freeze. So, um, although it's cheap and it's it's free, uh, that that is a fairly big downside to using dry dirt. Now, you can make wax dirt. Um, which something is something that needs to be done this time of year, uh, but um, uh, that involves some cost and does um, you know involve some effort. It is probably one of the best covers for uh, really cold weather trapping. Unfortunately, we never seem to get that done, so we're, a lot of times we're using cover holes, uh, peat moss, or we're carrying. Um, if we're say we're in New Mexico, it's bone dry there. Uh, you can get by with the dry dirt. But to, to back up, the peat moss, uh, if you go uh, to the home store and buy that, it is very reasonable. And one of those compressed, um, I don't remember what it is, but, but one of those bags, you know, six or seven dollars, and it will last a long time. So if you buy it, um, you know, make sure it's under one of the roofs or whatever, where it's not getting wet. And it'll, you know, you can buy it. A lot of times, just completely bone dry. If not, then you'll need to take it home, open it up, and let it air out or, and dry out, uh, so that you can use it. Coveralls certainly work very well, uh, but they are kind of expensive. Um, so uh, uh, if you're on a budget, um, my re overall recommendation is just, you know, if you can grin and bear, just buy the peat moss and, and uh, go that route. The other question I um, want to address is somebody asked if you could use one and a half coil springs for coyotes. And you can. Um, it's not ideal. It's less than ideal. The jawster bed's really small. And then the, the, the word one and a half coil has kind of got um, different layer, layers of or different levels of quality to it. So there's some that are really good. Say, you know, in the 450 uh, Minnesota brand, that's fairly comparable to a one and a half. Uh, and then you've got all the other one and a half brands out there. So some are certainly better than others. Some are certainly made better than others. But a lot of coyotes that you catch, assuming you get them in the trap, you're probably going to have a, a fair amount of those pull out uh, on some of those lesser, lighter one and a halves. And then, uh, you know, in the 450, certainly you get them in there and you got a really good chance of holding them and him being there when you get there. Problem is just the jaw spread. You've, you've lost um, a good bit of area there that um, to get the animal to step in. So that's another thing to keep in mind. But if that's all you have, I mean, that's, you know, that's what you got. That's what you can, you know but you have to just make the best of it. But it is less than ideal. And if I was going out and I was going to coyote trap and I had a choice, I certainly wouldn't use a one and a half coil. I always say buy the best equipment that you can afford. And I realize everyone, all of us are on a budget. None of us have an unlimited amount of money to spend on um, trapping equipment. But um, uh, you always want to try to buy the best equipment that you can afford uh, and buy this, you know, the, the suitable size for the animal that you're going after. So with that said, I try to avoid the one and a halves, uh, and then uh, in general, you know, there's a lot of really big coyote traps out there too. I personally, I'm kind of in the middle. I like that, well, we like 550s, number two bridgers, that kind of thing, uh, without going um, real big on the other end, uh, particularly if you catch anything other than a coyote. So I hope that helps. There's there's not a definitive answer for either one of those, uh, but there's certainly a good answer, and I think I gave it to you on both of those. But uh, um, anyways, that's a uh, Q&A for today. Keep sending those questions in and we'll uh, 
normally I try to answer them when, when they're um, emailed or uh, below the video or whatever, and then we'll try to um, get to them on the show as well. So thanks for sending them and uh, keep sending questions. We got one more thing before we let you go. Um, I want to talk about the fall rendezvous here at Hoosier Trapper Supply. It's the Fur Takers of America, Chapter 7B. Um, it's a great day. We've talked about it in the past on other episodes. It's a one day event. It's free. It's open to the public. Anyone can show up. Um, demos, good food, raffles, uh, plenty of stuff to see. Tailgaters will be here. And um, there's an auction. That's a big deal. And all the money raised for that is going towards um, trapping rights and education. So it's a big deal for the chapter to raise money. So um, it's, it's an important thing. I feel like if we're going to be a part of this, we need to help it continue and grow. So any donations, that's always great. That's all we ask for. Other than that, just show up and have a good time. Um, right now, I've been working on a design for a hoodie sweatshirt that we're going to sell um, at the rendezvous. Still in the works. It's going to have a different color scheme. I don't know if we're going to go with gray and red or what, but it's cool. It's got a coyote on there. It says keep the tradition alive. I'll probably make some changes on there, figure out what we want, but um, should be a pretty sharp looking hoodie, so you look good this year on the trap line. You gotta look, you gotta look sharp out there. So, and, um, so be on the lookout for that. it will be for sale here. Um, that's one thing we'll be selling along with memberships and hats, and we also have t-shirts. We have an old t-shirt on right now. Um, usually coffee, donuts, that sort of thing around 8 o'clock, and then 9 o'clock the first demo kicks off and it's a full day schedule. Um, things don't, the property the auction ends, you know, 6 o'clock or so, so it's a full day. It's a good day, so hope to see you there. Thanks for watching the show guys. Just want to let you know that we have the new catalog available. Pretty sharp looking cover there with Charlie working a muskrat hut. Um, you can get this by calling the shop here at any time. Just give us your home address and we'll be glad to send you one. Or you can visit us at whosatrappersupply.com and sign up that way. Request one. It's, it's real easy. It's on the home page. It's a brand new website. It's pretty sharp. And uh, you can also sign up for our email newsletter which informs you on uh, show dates when they're coming out and product highlights and shows or uh, specials that we may have going on at the time occasionally a blog by Charlie so just a little bit of insight of what's going on here at Hoosier Trapper will be in those newsletters one thing I wanted to add to is the first shed series is still out there so don't forget about that we send them out randomly there's no dates available anytime we think there's a tip or something useful that could help someone out in the field or in their shed We'll go ahead and throw it out there for you. And it's real clean cut, straight to the point. Anything from trap modification to fur grading or whatnot, just anything that's done in the shed, not necessarily done in the field, those tips can really be helpful. So be on the lookout for those. And go ahead and follow us too on uh, all the social media sites. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, the list goes on. Just find us on there. And, and we'd love to hear from you. Comments, like posts, all the good stuff. So we'll see you next time. Join us on September 28th for the next episode of Who's Your Trapper Outdoors.